Give it to Andy Roddick. He's pretty good at giving credit to opponents who beat him. But the folks at the USTA wish that things were the other way around. And he's having trouble closing the deal at some of the smaller tournaments. For more on that, let's go inside now to Jeff Batten and Bill Oaks. you got to give uh, Sam Del Potro his due. He played a great match against Andy Roddick. And Andy is very good at being complimentary to players that beat him. He'll always say things like, well, the guy was just in the zone today. What are you going to do? Well, for those of us who have watched Roddick win a lot of big tournaments, especially early in his career, it's sort of like, boy, I'm getting tired of you complimenting your opponent. I'd like to hear your opponent complimenting you. Andy, it can't be an issue of confidence. The guy has been playing with a lot of confidence this year after being Roger, for, and he's been struggling with that for many years, Nadal, Djokovic. But it seems like he is just not able to tune it up early in the match in these big matches and allows guys like Del Potro to start to gain the confidence early in the match that translates to a continued opportunity to beat Andy every time. Andy Roddick has had two great U.S. Opens, and in both of those years, 2003-2006, he won a lead-in tournament and played very well in the summer, so this does not bode well for him. More on that and other things in our top five as we get going with the list of things that made tennis news this week. Taylor Dent has been MIA for a couple of years, and now he's back. He played a first round, uh, he played an ATP event last week, Bill. Yeah, he's 0-2 on the ATP on his comeback. He hasn't played since February 2006. He had two back surgeries to repair some bone in his lower back, and both times he was on his back for eight months. This guy, though he was happy to be playing, he really wasn't disappointed in losing, you know, because he was just excited to be back on the tour. Taylor Dent, his comeback would be a great story for American tennis. Don't think it's going to happen. Other Americans, John Isner, some good news for him recently. He won all 39 first service points, which set an ATP record in one match. He lost some points during match, but they were all on second serve. No player had ever won more than 35 first service points in a match. I find that pretty amazing since they've been keeping the statistics. He has an amazing serve, John Isner. Number three, from here in Atlanta, we've got USTA National Participants, teams coming up. We've got four teams headed to the national championships. I, I got to believe that's the best any city in America is doing. One, the guys from Roswell Park, the 3 0 men, seniors are heading to Vegas. The senior 3 5 men from Roswell Park as well are headed to Indian Wells. The men's 2 5 team from Manor Golf and Country Club are headed to Las Vegas as well. And the men's 3 5 from Duluth, they're heading to play in Tucson. Gotta All love that 2.5 tennis bill. All in October. All right, Andy Murray loses early in the Olympics. Once again, nobody has any idea what to make of Andy Murray. Yeah, he talked about an interview in London last week that the Olympics rank just as important as the slams to him. Well, the results that he's had recently sure made it look like him as a kind of a favorite. He had won Cincinnati, made the semifinals in Canada, quarterfinals in Wimbledon, but he lost to a guy ranked 77 from Chinese Taipei in the first round. Kind of surprising. All right, number one, the Cincinnati tournament, a little bit of business news here, uh, has been sold to the USTA. That's probably a good thing for everybody. I think it's a great thing for everyone, Jeff, because that tournament, if the guy had, who owns the tournament had passed away, they could have been in the same situation what happened to the Miami Dolphins a few years ago, where it's a scenario where the heirs can't afford the tax, the tournament has to get sold. This way, it stays in the U.S. The USTA has bought about 80% of the tournament, and it allows the tournament staff to stay on for a few years before it transitions to a full USTA event. Other business news. For those of you that are a little more hardcore, the ATP won its lawsuit against the German Tennis Federation, which really sets into motion some positive things if you're on the ATP board. If you're part of the ATP kind of inner circle right now, you got to be jumping for joy because the lawsuit was not only won by the ATP, they smashed the Hamburg and Georgia uh, German Tennis Federation. The jury was out for only a few hours you know, was unanimous in their decision, it really emboldens them to make decisions that I think are in the best interest of the tour and maybe not in the best interest of some individual tennis tournaments. So no matter how you spin it, Sam, the ATP certainly managed to save itself. Believe me, five years from now, folks won't remember that the men's tour as we know it was on the verge of extinction. Let's hope some good things come out of that landmark court case. All right, still to come on Match Point. And, um, I still feel like my best tennis is ahead of me. Marty Fish has had a reputation in recent years of getting off to a good start early in the year and then tailing off once the summer rolls around. Bill, he seemed to put things together for a pretty good week in L.A. last week. Well, I do think that's a fairly accurate portrayal, but he did make the finals last year of the New Haven event right before the U.S. Open, but before that he was somewhat inconsistent going 2-7 and seven throughout the summer. 
This year, at the beginning of the summer, he lost four consecutive first-round matches prior to the semifinal run in Los Angeles. Maybe he's starting to think about a September 28th nuptial date to case girl number two on Deal or No Deal and the trivets he's registered for at Williams-Sonoma, Bloomingdale's, or Crate and Barrel. Is she better looking than case girl number seven? I'm she giving, was always my favorite. Yeah, I'm going case girl number two. <laughs> okay, back to the world of tennis and all of the things that Bill Oaks can come up with in a minute and 20 seconds. We call it the Tennis Commission. Many of you have heard that the USTA has recently purchased a majority interest in the Cincinnati Masters event. The owner of the tournament is over 80 years old, and he wanted to make certain the tournament stayed in the U.S. He figured if he were to pass away suddenly, the death tax liability may place his heirs in a position that they had to sell the tournament abroad to cover that tax liability. When you tune in to USA Network the evening of Monday, August 25th to watch the U.S. Open, you will see a gaggle of past U.S. Open champions. Since the beginning of U.S. Open professional tennis, there have been 40 different male and female champions. The USTA will honor those champions the first night of the tournament. So far, about 24 of those 40 have committed to be in attendance. Rafael Nadal's comments that hard courts are more damaging to the tennis players' bodies is likely true. But do not think that he is altruistic. I believe he is sending a warning shot that as a new member of the Players' Council, he is going to lobby to limit or eliminate some hard courts events in the future. Hard courts are likely his worst surface, and if he had his choice, the tour would spend more time in Europe and on the dirt. Now, if you were asked the week prior to the Olympics that you can be a late addition to the Olympic roster, I think most Americans would jump at the chance no matter what their sport is. Well, I found out that Donald Young and John Isner were both invited to play on the U.S. team due to the many withdrawals in the field, but both said they would rather stay in the U.S. to play in L.A. and D.C. No matter what you do, you cannot get away from the Olympics right now. Ratings are through the roof. It's all you read about in the paper. you got all this buzz about the Americans and how well they're doing. And here are two Americans, Isner and Donald Young, who have a chance to play for the U.S. delegation in tennis, and they swung and missed. Both of those guys have very low confidence right now. They were really kind of expecting they may lose too early. They both played very well last year during the U.S. Open Summer Series. And Sam, don't forget, they have big points to defend come the U.S. Open as well. When you think about all the grumbling that's going on over in Beijing over the heat and pollution by those players, it seems like perhaps the decisions that Roddick, Young, and Isner made were not so bad. All right, still to